He's got the toys. He's got showmanship. And he's got sex appeal. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, from the great Southwest, here's the guru of gadgets, the dapper and dashing Don Bain, the Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Gadget Professor. My name is Don Bain, and of course, I am the Gadget Professor. Thank you so much for tuning in. I really appreciate it. As you know, we come out with a new episode every Thursday evening, Arizona time between 7 and 9 o'clock-ish. I appreciate you tuning in. This week, we are on show 155, and if you do the math, next show, the 156 show, will be three years that we have been doing the Gadget Professor, so uh, I can't believe it. And uh, we're heard in 169 countries around the world at this point, and I have you to thank. So uh, if you're watching The Gadget Professor, you know how to get us. It's pretty simple. Just go to thegadgetprofessor.com. And uh, when you see our webpage, just scroll down halfway, and you'll see the newsletter there. Put your email address in. It's totally free. Every Thursday evening, as soon as the episode is posted in your inbox, you will get all the URLs, everything we talked about, hot link, so you don't have to take any notes while you watch The Gadget Professor. And obviously, you scroll down and you can watch the show just by kicking, clicking, not kicking, kicking, <laughs> clicking play. Uh, and you also can listen to the audio if you want. Uh, we're on the iTunes. We are on the uh, Roku box. We have our own channel there. And uh, pretty much any glass surface, your iPad, your iPod, uh, Android, tablet, iPhone, whatever, uh, we are available. I think it's 168 uh, different types of surfaces, glass surfaces that you can tune into The Gadget Professor on. We're also on Facebook. It would be Facebook, The Gadget Professor. I am posting much more regularly on Facebook than I used to, which is a good thing. And if you go to my Facebook page, you will actually see uh, a ton of interviews that we recently did at NAB 2014 Live. Uh, here's our interview that we did with uh, Tom Curran of Paladin. Here's a great interview we did with uh, uh, the folks at the live stream. And uh, that was a great interview. That, that was pretty interesting. It showed all their new products. And uh, uh, here's one we did with the MXL microphone. So if you go on the uh, Facebook page, you'll certainly see those interviews and a lot of other stuff. And then last but not least, you can follow me on Rebel Mouse. That would be rebelmouse.com forward slash gadget professor. What the Rebel Mouse page is, it takes all our tweets. And certainly we're on Twitter. That would be at gadget professor, at gadget professor. You can follow me on Twitter, and if you really like to see what's going on, go to the Rebel Mouse forward slash Gadget Professor page, and that gets updated constantly, multiple times an hour, and it basically takes every new gadget that's been uh, released this day, and it shows you what's new in technology, and I also uh, post to the uh, Rebel Mouse uh, all the interviews that I've done at NAB, so Rebel Mouse is like a collection of everything that the Gadget Professor's done, and it's a lot of fun to look at. You look at the picture, you pick out what you want, you click it, and then you got the whole article there. So, uh, let's begin our show today with uh, some, some news. This irritates and boils and broils my blood. Uh, Google, Apple, Intel, and Adobe. I'm sure you've heard at least one of those four companies settle a conspiracy lawsuit to the tune of a $324 million payment. I'll repeat that, $324 million. Google, Apple, Intel, and Adobe. And Adobe. Adobe, they settled a conspiracy law, lawsuit. Uh, four major Silicon Valley-based tech companies, Google, Apple, Intel, and Adobe, have agreed to settle a lawsuit that claimed they tried to hold down the salaries of its workers and restrict hiring employees from each other. As part of the settlement, the four businesses will pay a total of $324 million to the employees who are part of the lawsuit, which originally was filed nearly three years ago. Uh, you can read the article. It makes you want to puke. Uh, I'm not going to comment any more than what I've just did, but boy, you know, you think these people are trustworthy and honest and, uh, you know, that kind of thing, but uh, the truth of the matter is they're, they're, they're scoundrels and it's, it's, it's nauseating. Okay, moving right along, uh, this one freaks me out. It's not surprising to me, but it's probably surprising to everybody else. You've heard this rant and rave about, uh, all about the news for the last few days, but a stranger hacked into a baby monitor camera and uh, screams at the child and also the parent. I will put this up uh, on the show notes. Uh, essentially, it was a, uh, a Foscam camera. 
uh, which I don't recommend, and I haven't recommended those for, for a long time. I've tried several of them. I don't like them, and quite frankly, the company's not the easiest to deal with when it comes to tech support, but they actually have a video uh, from Fox 19 that, that tells in detail what happened. Absolutely true, and uh, if you want to read a little bit more about it, wireless camera flaws allow remote exploitation. FOSCAM wireless IP cameras contain multiple vulnerabilities, vulnerabilities that can be used to steal uh, credentials or hack the device to launch and further attacks, warns researchers, and there's a whole article about that. And uh, essentially there is some firmware inside of these cameras, and all these cameras, all these remote viewing cameras, do have firmware inside of them. And for most people, you open them up, you plug them in, and they work. But what you don't realize is that inside there's a small server which contains some code. And there's an EEPROM in there, which is what makes this whole thing work. And that EEPROM is able to take what's called a firmware update. It's in the BIOS system. Most people, probably 99% of the population, doesn't even know what firmware is or know how to update it. And to update the firmware, you, you take the company, the, the name of the product, you go into the company's website, and you type firmware upgrade. And then uh, you would see if you're on version 1 and it's 1.2, then you want to upgrade to the latest version. So, of course, uh, they had an upgrade after the flaw was, was, was noted, and they fixed it, and then they try to email everybody in the world that we fixed the flaw. But not a good way to do it. It's kind of working backwards. So, uh, interesting read if you want to take a peek at that. Now, uh, we also have some more hacking going on this week. This is our hacking section, I guess. Uh, if you're using Internet Explorer, which comes standard with every Windows uh, machine uh, by Microsoft, uh, I would personally stop using it. I never use Internet Explorer. I haven't used Internet Explorer in, in years. I don't even know how long. I just don't like the browser. But uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, things that are in Explorer that makes it quite vulnerable to hackers. This article goes on to explain the, uh, the actual uh, vulnerabilities that exist with the uh, browser. And uh, they say that it's been fixed as of two days ago. I would not use it. So I would, I would, what I use is Chrome. That's what I'm using right now. And I'll tell you an interesting thing about Chrome. Uh, if you sign into the Chrome browser, username and password, you can use your Google name and password to sign in on Chrome. Uh, what happens is if you close down uh, on your laptop and you go to your tablet, that same uh, menu that you had would be on the next machine that you open. So what's nice about uh, the Chrome is, is it will interact with every machine that you have. Kind of a nice feature. Uh, now, if you want to test your internet speed, if you're paying for speed and you're supposed to get five up and five down or whatever the case may be, uh, this is the best site that I've found to do a speed test. It's called speedtest.net. And uh, check it out. It gives you your upload speed and your download speed. So if your computer's working kind of slow and sluggish and not actually giving you what you want, uh, in terms of speed, you can actually see if you're getting what you paid for by going to the uh, uh, speedtest.net site. And uh, it's fairly simple to operate. Uh, you just click uh, Begin Test. Uh, I'm here in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I am on a uh, uh, Wi-Fi right now. And as you can see, it's doing its test. And uh, it gives you a ping reading, which is how quickly it's, it, it, it's hitting the, uh, the other computers that, it, that it's going to to link up. And right now, my download speed is roughly 13.51. Uh, that will stop in a second. So it's 13.47 millibits, millibits download speed. And now my upload speed right now, uh, averaging, just looking at it now, is about 2.2. Uh, and that will stop in a minute. And uh, it will give you your upload speed. So this is a handy feature. You can use any apparatus to try it, your desktop, your laptop, your cell phone, whatever you want. And uh, right now, my results are a ping of uh, 42 milliseconds, download speed of 13.47, and an upload speed of 1.74, which isn't great, but that's what it is. So uh, that's how you use that. Now, uh, rolling right along, uh, here's a cool app. It's called Opinion Outpost. And if you have nothing to do and you're sitting home and in your spare time, what you do is you sign up uh, on Opinion Outpost and uh, it's going to ask if your name and your email address and some other personal stuff. But what it, what it does is it will pay you to take surveys. So if you really have nothing else to do and you want to make a couple bucks, this site is legit. 
uh, it may ask you some personal things that you don't want to answer, and I certainly understand that, but you know, if, if you want to make some extra money doing pretty much nothing except clicking through things and filling out surveys, uh, people want to pay to have your opinions, and uh, as I said, this site is legit. Now, talking about uh, uh, hacking and, and all that stuff, uh, you know, you have another issue that you need to deal with today, and that's uh, emergencies. So, this is a great piece of software. It's totally free. It's available on the uh, iOS and also the Android platform, and it's called Ping4 Alerts. And this is a public safety emergency alert, local news notifications, real-time info for missing child, traffic, weather, and crime reports. And it's a very cool thing to have on your phone. It will certainly keep you uh, appraised of any disaster or any impending disaster, whether it's weather-related or public safety-related, and it might be something you want to uh, check out and put on your phone. Okay, uh, this has nothing to do with gadgets, but it's very cool to me, and I thought you might get a kick out of it. What do you get if you cross a donkey with a zebra? And the answer is a zonkey. It's a rare crossbreed that has just been born in the Mexican zoo, and uh, it's the coolest looking animal. There's a picture of it. I will have this on the website, and uh, it's actually all over the web. If you haven't seen it, it's the cutest animal. It's got the donkey ears and the zebra legs, and there's several videos floating around. So uh, I just thought it was really, really cool. Absolutely beautiful animal, and uh, I wish I had one as a pet. I like it a lot. We're having fun here? Okay. Now uh, we're getting back on the security kick, so to speak, and uh, this is a piece of software that I've used for a while. It looks very uh, uh, intimidating, but really it's not. It's called Microsoft Baseline Security Analyzer 2.3. It says for IT professionals, but you don't necessarily have to be an IT professional to use this. Uh, it's a free download, and the Microsoft Baseline Security Analyzer provides a streamlined method to identify missing security updates and common security misconfigurations. And this will tell you exactly if you're safe or not safe from uh, impending hackers. and. Uh, uh, if you have a, uh, a Windows-based system, uh, this works well. It will not work with XP because it's not supported anymore. And here we have uh, a site. I had an email this week, and it said, Gadget Professor, if you had to choose one site and one site only to watch free stuff, what site would that be? And that site would be Hulu, H-U-L-U dot com. Uh, they have TV, movies, originals, kid stuff, Latino, and more. 99.999% uh, of it is totally free. Tons and tons and tons and tons of stuff to choose from. So if you're not familiar with Hulu, check it out. Certainly if you have a, uh, a Roku box, uh, the Hulu channel is, is, is already on there. And now we are going to get into the gadget of the day. And uh, before we do that, I'll show you the little tool that uh, I actually carry with me and to have on my desk at all time, and it's called the Getaway Driver by Torx. And uh, this is what it looks like picture-wise, okay? And I think we have camera two up. I'm going to show it to you up close. This is it here. You can see on the side there's actual uh, little bits there that actually are going to go into the front of this. You can see the little hex key there. So those bits actually pop out and come into that, go into the top of that, and then there's a can opener here and uh, there's a hex wrench here. And also, uh, there is a light on this. Uh, there you go. So uh, this is a very handy thing to have with you. Uh, rumor has it that uh, maybe the uh, uh, TSA lets you take this on board. That's what I heard. So anyway, uh, I use this device, and I'll show you why in a minute. It's a very handy thing. And uh, if you go to CRKT, it sells for 19 bucks. But if you go to Amazon, uh, you can get this tool for $9.97, 10 bucks, and that's prime, so it's free shipping. They also have other models uh, for 13 bucks, 26 bucks. I think they add more blades or more configurations. I can't figure it out from the pictures, but uh, these are pretty inexpensive, makes a great gift, and it's a very handy tool to have around. So uh, let's get right to the gadget of the day. Uh, if you've watched The Gadget Professor, you have known... Uh, for the last three years, I keep saying, you know, the cloud, the cloud, the cloud, be careful, be careful, be careful. So what I'm going to do today is a two-part series. This will be part one, and I'll make it quick for you, as to how to build your own server inexpensively, real cheap, that has a RAID configuration. And what the RAID configuration does, that's R-A-I-D, and there's many 
configurations of RAID. There's RAID 1, RAID 2, RAID 3, RAID 4, RAID 5, and each different configuration gives you different types of redundancy. The reason you want a RAID configuration is it protects all your data in case there's a hard drive failure. Now obviously you need two hard drives to get a basic RAID configuration. If you only have one hard drive then you can't use a RAID configuration. What the RAID configuration does is it transfers some of the data on one drive and some of the data on the other drive and essentially if one drive fails it knows that and it transfers the other uh, piece of that data onto the drive that's good or if you have several drive it parses that information to the other three or four or five how many drives you had. So obviously the cheapest way to do it is to have two drives. If you have three drives then you have better security because the chance of two failing is not as good as the chance of one failing, so on and so forth. So this is a two box media power media server and what this actually will do and it does a lot of things uh, is it's a hybrid cloud media center for your house and it consolidates your cloud media server so in English what I'm saying is this this box right here uh, is a media server that's that's what it's for it will make your own cloud and you can put all your backups all your movies all your photos all your financial data on your own personal cloud and uh, the uh, Zyxl media server works with a wide variety of public cloud services including Dropbox, Google Drive, uh, Memopal and more. Alternatively you can create your own private cloud this is what I recommend you do with your own cloud or uh, podcast for a secure private cloud data. Backup, playback, download files freely anywhere you go with your uh, XyXL media servers. So here's a little picture and it just shows you your tablet, your smartphone, your PC, I don't care what platform you're on, all the stuff that's on those devices can end up in the cloud which is essentially on this little uh, NSA 320S box and that's what it's for. Uh, backup and protection, RAID configuration so your drive, if, it, if it, one drive junks out the data is still saved there. And you also have the ability to send files, to receive files, and to access your files from anywhere on the internet with your own private cloud, which means no one knows it's there except you, so it's not a target. If I was a hacker, would I rather break into Bank America or to one guy's server that I don't even know exists? The answer is obvious. So let's take a little look. We'll go on to camera two as to how this actually works. Here is the box. It's quite small. Uh, as you can see it's, it, it's very small it weighs about two pounds and uh, it's very well built there's a fan in the back there's an ethernet cable there is a bunch of uh, different connectors on the back here's where your power goes right there so it does come with an external power source that comes with the device that's pretty simplistic right there you plug that in the wall and the other end is going to go uh, right over here uh, we also have uh, two USBs here, as I said the fan and the front has multiple indicator lights which we'll get into in a little bit and here's your on and off switch which turns it on and off and also on the front uh, you have USB and a bunch of other as I said tally lights. Now the way this works is you have to set it up you just get the box there are no hard drives that come with it. Now enter my little tool here and the way you get into the box is by tipping this upside down and right here you can see there's a little uh, indent point so basically I'm going to take this tool and just gently push depress this in and you'll see that this top pops off and that's all there is to that now here's what the inside looks like now it's very very easy to install the hard drives essentially you're going to purchase two drives these happen to be three terabyte drives they're standard drives and if you check the specs on this XL box it gives you a list of about 40 different drives that will uh, synchronize or you know be valid with this particular configuration so it comes with the box you're gonna buy two hard drives and you get this little kit and in this kit it's pretty straightforward you're gonna get four slats here's two of them and you're gonna get some screws and they put them in this little plastic package just you know it's a, a pack of screws so what happens is you're going to take this hard drive, we'll go back on camera one, you're going to take this hard drive and basically you're going to take these two rails and they're labeled top and bottom 
and you're going to apply them with the four screws very simply onto the sides of the drive. So it will look something like this. Okay, you can see these plastic rods and one would be on each side. So they just screw right in. Every drive has these holes, so they're just going to screw right in there. Pretty simple to do. And then at that point, this drive is already put inside here. It just slides in and it locks in place. That's it. So one drive's already in there. I'm going to put the slats on this drive and it will slide in. At that point, what I'm going to do is just take this case and uh, put it back together, which is uh, pretty simple. It just hooks onto here. And we're going to gently push this in. And we'll get this little tool here. Okay, so that's back together, and that's pretty much all you need to do. Now, at that point, you're going to plug it in. And it comes with its own. You get your Ethernet cord, can't beat that. And it comes with software and an excellent book that shows you how to hook up everything and how to load the software. So what I'm going to do now is hold up because the software is going to take about 15 to 20 more minutes to go through. But what this will allow you to do is quite amazing. Uh, here's some of the high points. You can multiply, uh, you can multiple simultaneous, simultaneously stream high def. So with the powerful CPU and the read-write rate up to four times faster than most network storage appliances, the XL, the Xi XL NSA 320-2 two-bay power server can quickly transfer, backup, and stream large media files throughout your home network. It's the perfect media hub for any household able to handle multiple simultaneous 1080p high-definition uh, files. Uh, it will stream uh, to different uh, UP, NP, and DLNA. That's a kind of a specification. Uh, it will work with the Microsoft, Xbox, the Sony PS3, and the DLNA enabled TVs throughout the house. Your media your way. It manages uh, to do backup, play all your media, freeing you to display however you want, wherever you want, whenever you want with only a few, few clicks. You can upload your photographs from wherever you are. You can or organize them into presentations and it even will allow you to make presentations with music, photos, video, and stream them through all your devices in your house. Boasting ver versatility, this also acts as an iTunes server box, squeeze center box, or personal blog and photo album server. Your media will be free to share and stream to PCs, laptops, MP3 players, squeeze boxes anywhere on your home network. It allows you to automatically upload and download uh, without ever turning on the PC. Your RSS feed, which is really cool, allows you to set up automatic downloads on the internet for content such as audio and video podcasting, ensuring that all your favorite media will be ready and waiting for you. You can even subscribe to the Gadget Professor on this box. And uh, it works with Internet Explorer, which I don't like, Firefox, uh, Emule, BitTorrents, FTP, which we'll talk about next week, or HTTP downloads directly to the box. It allows you to turn uh, off your computer after starting a large download when the uh, NSA320 completes the download for independent work and use from your PC. And it goes on and on and on. Uh, it's a very cool box, and of course you're all wondering how much. Believe it or not, it's only $89 on Prime at Amazon. So. I think this is a great way if you're looking for a mechanism to back up your software, as many as you have. Obviously, it only can back up to how many drives you have. I have two, two three terabyte drives. That's six terabytes. Now, when you're in a RAID configuration, you don't get the full six terabytes because some of it's used for backup and swapping files. But uh, you're certainly going to have five terabytes there easily. And uh, that will back up any of your computers, not only one, but two or three. It will back up all your music. It will back up all your movies, all your videos, all your home videos. Uh, it will allow you to send files to that. People who you know can send you files or you could send them files. You have your own cloud and it's secure and it's backed up. So for 89 bucks plus the cost of uh, whatever drives you want to put in there, uh, you've got a very uh, inexpensive but highly, highly functional 
server uh, that will protect your, uh, your data. And uh, I've always been a, a big fan of having your own cloud. And this is uh, as small and as economical, I believe, as it gets. So uh, in, one, in the next episode or one of the upcoming episodes, I'll actually have this hooked up off-site and I will show you via my computer how you integrate with this server and how you can stream media and back up your, your computers with this, uh, with this media server. So that will wrap it up today for the Gadget Professor. I hope you enjoyed the episode. It's a really cool device. You should check it out if you're at all interested in, in having your own backup in your own cloud because, again, it, uh, it does a good job and it's, it's relatively cheap. Uh, for 89 bucks, you, you can't even... Uh, I think carbonite costs you more, and that's that you can't it doesn't even do half of what this does. So I will see everybody next week. It will be our third year grand anniversary show. I have a couple things cooked up production-wise that we're going to try to integrate into the show to give us a new look and face because I want to keep current. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see everybody next Thursday. The Gadget Professor is produced by Don Bain. Multimedia Communications, LLC. If you would like your product reviewed on The Gadget Professor or would like to appear on The Gadget Professor, contact us via email at thegadgetprofessor at gmail.com. The opinions expressed on the program by the host, guests, call-in listeners, or chatters are solely the opinions of the original source who expressed them. And thank you for watching The Gadget Professor. Gadget Professor.